Hello and welcome to JAWS 19. In this episode, I'm going to look forward to 2019, or is it 2019? I'm not, not sure what the naming convention is. I'm going to look at each month and talk about the films that I'm looking forward to for the next 12 months. I think it's going to be a bumper year for cinema. Uh, so yeah, here's my selections. Now, despite the critical mauling that Holmes and Watson seems to be getting, I'm still a big fan of John C. Riley. I think he's a very, very talented actor. And also, I think Steve Coogan is one of probably our premier comedic actors around at the moment. And to see these two paired up and playing the godfathers of double act comedy, Laurel and Hardy, in uh, Stan and Ollie, I think that's pitch perfect casting and I really can't wait to see that. Lord and Miller's first Lego movie was an absolute joy. Beautifully animated, an amazing voice cast led by Chris Pratt, uh, Alison Brie, Elizabeth Banks, Nick Offerman, Will Arnett, Morgan Freeman, Liam Neeson, the list goes on and on and on. And it was an amazing film and a real cultural phenomenon. I'm looking forward massively to uh, part two. Um, I haven't seen any of the spin-off movies yet, the Lego Batman movie and the Ninjago movie. But um, yeah, high hopes for the uh, part two of the Lego movie. I'm obviously very, very excited uh, about Captain Marvel being released. I think it's high time that Marvel threw a decent female superhero at the screen. And uh, Brie Larson is a huge talent and I can't wait to see what she brings to the MCU. Uh, but uh, for this month, I think I'm most excited about Jordan Peele's follow up to Get Out, uh, the film Us. I saw the trailer recently and it looks terrifying, terrifying. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to us. So staying with Marvel, April is when us Marvel fans get to breathe again and we see the release of Endgame, the uh, closing chapter to the Infinity War pairing of films. Um, but I'm also massively looking forward to Shazam. Uh, the trailers look like DC has finally found its sense of fun. It's colourful, it's bright, it's comedic. Uh, the performances look really, really funny. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Shazam. Since James Gunn departed from Marvel and left the Guardians of the Galaxy movies in limbo, we've all been kind of keen to see what he's going to do next. And a trailer dropped recently for a film called Brightburn, which he is producing. Now, on the face of it, it does just really look like an, an anti-Superman movie, the kind of bad superhero trope, but I think it looks interesting. Again, we've got a good cast. We've got Elizabeth Banks. We've got David Denman from The Office. Uh, the film's tone looks suitably creepy, and uh, the visuals look interesting. So, yeah, I think it could be worth a look. So June is looking like a bumper month for sequel fans. We've got the next part of the X-Men franchise, The Dark Phoenix, starring Sophie Turner. We've also got the next instalment of the Men in Black franchise, uh, this time led by Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. That looks pretty good. Um, but I suppose the one that we're all most looking forward to is Toy Story 4, a film that we weren't really sure should have existed, but Pixar rarely put a foot wrong. So I think we'll go into this one with optimism. Um, yeah, looking forward to Toy Story 4. So unless you're completely insane, you'll agree with me that Spider-Man Homecoming is the best live action Spider-Man film that we've yet seen. Tom Holland really made the character of Peter Parker and Spider-Man his own, and I think he enhanced every single one of the Marvel films that he's appeared in thus far. And uh, in this month, we get to see the follow-up, Spider-Man Far From Home, again with Tom Holland, and with Jake Gyllenhaal playing the long-awaited baddie Mysterio. Really, really looking forward to this one. Now, August is quite a lean month, cinematically speaking. There's not a lot going on. But to return back to X-Men, we get to see New Mutants, which seems to have really grasp the horror side of the uh, the X-Men franchise and we've got a great cast Anya Taylor-Joy, Maisie Williams, uh, it's got a definite Stranger Things vibe to it, a young teenage cast um, but yeah I think this could be really interesting. <laughs> Staying with that Stranger Things vibe uh, in September we get to see It Chapter 2. I absolutely loved the first chapter of it, I thought it was genuinely scary and creepy and Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise was a revelation. 
Uh, I would have been interested to see what Will Poulter did with that role, but I think Bill Skarsgård nailed it. And now we get to see the events 27 years hence, set in 2016 with an adult cast. We've got James McAvoy, Jessica Chastain, Bill Hader. Um, yeah, really looking forward to see what the adults do with Pennywise. Joaquin Phoenix is one of my favourite actors at the moment and the work that he did with Lynn Ramsey in You Were Never Really Here made it one of my, my top films of this year. And in this month we get to see him portraying the Joker uh, in a film directed by Todd Phillips, more known for comedy. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see what he can do with a sort of dark and macabre tale. November sees us revisiting the Terminator franchise, which let's be fair has been flagging in recent years. Since the first two Terminator films there was a massive drop off in quality, I think you'd all agree with that. But apparently this film, led by Deadpool's Tim Miller, is going to ignore all the other films, kind of Halloween style, and this sixth part will be a direct sequel to T2. So I'm going to see what they're going to do with all those timelines and how they're going to tie up all those strange loose ends, but I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting, looking forward to that one. So by this time next year the internet will be awash with angry Star Wars fans who've seen the film and probably hated it or said it wasn't the Star Wars film they wanted or expected or the usual blah 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 blah. Not really interested. I think The Last Jedi was a fantastic entry into the series. Uh, it took risks with the characters and the visuals and I think it paid off. I think it was a fascinating film and I really really enjoyed it. Uh, Colin Trevorrow was supposed to d d direct episode 9 but uh, instead left due to creative differences and has been replaced with J.J. Abrams who led Force Awakens. So it's back in safe hands so maybe the risks that are being taken will be fewer but I still think it's going to be worth watching and it'll still be an interesting film and after all it's Star Wars. We're going to see it anyway aren't we? So there we have it. My roundup of the films that I'm most looking forward to over the next 12 months. Thanks to everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Come and see me on Twitter at Jaws19Show. You can also support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash Jaws19. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.